Hello everyone, it's Megan from Kinhub here, and welcome to today's video on the histology of the scalp and hair. In this tutorial, we'll get an idea of what hair looks like through the microscope. We'll be discussing the scalp, the structure of hair, the parts of a hair fibre, and the accessory structures associated with hair fibres. We'll also cover the types of hair we have on our body, and a clinical scenario where knowledge of hair growth is important. But first let me give you an overview of hair. Hair fibres are primarily made of cells and keratin strands. Keratin is a protein which also forms your nails and helps your skin be waterproof and resistant to damage. Hair is unsurprisingly found in hairy skin. This is the scientific name for the type of skin and is the opposite of glabrous or hairless skin. Hairy skin covers most of the body, with glabrous skin normally only present on the palms of the hands, fingertips and soles of the feet. So on our man here, almost all of his body is in fact hairy. But why do we need hair? Well hair actually has many functions, including regulating temperature, protecting the skin and other organs such as the eyes, ears and nose, providing a shield from UV radiation, and helping with our sense of touch. On this last point, the hair fibres act as levers to detect minute forces passing over the skin's surface. This helps us to notice small flies and parasites on our skin. As a byproduct, it also lets us detect wind and the feeling of goosebumps. If you say hair to someone, chances are they'll think of the hair of the head, and that's what we'll be focusing on most today. Let's begin by talking about the scalp. In this section, we'll take a look at the type of stain used on the histological sections we'll see in this tutorial, that is, Laidwig's stain, the boundaries of the scalp, the blood supply or the arteries and veins, as well as the lymphatics and innervation of the scalp. This image is a histological section of the scalp, with the epidermis at the top here and this being the dermis. As you can see, we've managed to cut longitudinally through a hair follicle. This section is stained with a special solution called Laidwig's stain or Laidwig's trichrome, which is used to visualise connective tissue. With this staining method, nuclei stain dark red black, muscle and collagen stain blue, and cytoplasm stain red. We'll be using this image and another Laidwig stain slide a lot in this tutorial, so familiarising yourself with these colours should help you understand what you're seeing, although I'll try to describe what we're looking at along the way. The scalp includes all the layers covering the skull on the top, back and sides, and has its boundaries at the border with the face at the front, above and behind the ears at the sides, and to the neck at the back and sides. Although we said that the scalp includes all the layers covering the skull, for the purposes of this tutorial we'll be discussing just the outer layer, the skin of the scalp, as this is where the hair grows from. On the image we have the epidermis here, stained red due to the cell's cytoplasms, and the dermis here, stained blue because of its collagen content. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.